Thank you so much for tuning in to the Shalefti Open here on MDG Media. It's Nate Perkins here to announce the winner of that huge giveaway. And the winner is Jan Fair. Jan, leave us a comment in this video and we will be in touch with you to ship you out that bag full of discs. Congratulations and Clash, thank you so much for supporting this giveaway. Go check out their full lineup over at ClashDiscs.com. Guys, we will see you next week in Norway for the PCS Open. All right, you guys have found yourself watching MDG Media once again. This is the conclusion of Eurotour stop number five, the Sheleftia Open here at Discoff Terminalen in the far north of Sweden. I'm your host, Nate Perkins, the Perks of Discoff here with Elias Lukanen. Larry Lettinen finds himself just two back of the lead. Can he get it done? We'll see on this back nine. Some other good things to note from the top then. James Proctor, great. Five under front nine. Scott Stokely, great. Four under front nine. And Mira Rivihanen, young player from Finland, climbing himself into that podium position. A lot of stuff going on. Very scorable back nine here. Way more scorable than the front. We should see a lot of birdies. Yeah, these next four are really scorable. This one is just 135 meters dead straight. No OB to speak of. And basket is just up on this little knoll. Just enough to make the putt something to think about. But the grass is so thick, we really don't see too many extreme rollaways here. Yeah, and it's really a pretty simple shot for these top players. Just throw your either fast fairway driver or distance driver straight down the right side of the fairway. As Lauri has done, he's challenging the branches there with an explorer, I believe. Has landed a little bit short. He's gonna have another one of those just outside the edge of the circle putts that he's had already plenty of throughout this round. A little overturn there with the force. Is that coming back? And it did. Fought back late in the flight. That's inside the circle. Yeah, advantage Paul. Gonna see Lauri putt first before he gets to go. Silver pulling out that backhand of his. He's known more for his forehand, but showing off that he's got some power on the backhand. Not the greatest angle control there though. Landing well short, turning it over. And Gustav, showing off that drive. We saw a lot of great putts from him in the front nine, but showing off that he can drive the disc as well. Wow, he has gone long on this 135 meter hole. Only about eight meters left for the birdie. A little pitch up from Silver. 12 meters here for Lowry. Oh, and he's good for it. That putt was so clean. It just is flat, perfect pace. Ooh, and now it just jumps out. Surprising miss from Gustav. Very solid on the putting green. Paul, of course, makes it on the left side. Grabbing on those loose, wide latitude chains that most often catch very well. Even a little bit off the pole. So the leaders putting another birdie on the table here. Really separating themselves from the rest of the field. 
and the battle continues. Alright, hole 11. 185 meters. You really just need about 105 meters on a hyzer. You want to push the right side of those birch trees right at the whole way. Get a little skip. And there's one specific spot you need to land right about here. And then you're left with an uphill 80 meter shot. Kind of a low ceiling basket up on this little hill roll away potential left and right no ob here but these birch trees are so dense if you get in them you can bogey pretty quick yep most of the time if you get caught up in the short or the long corner your best bet is to just lay up to the fairway laura is pushing the long side but just barely skips back into play and that is just perfect position there he's gonna have a straight shot at the basket probably gonna throw a putter or mid-range from there and gotta note paul is actually taking that offhand off the disc if you recall he actually did that at worlds last year when he was struggling with his timing i believe he he mentioned to us in his interview after round two that he was feeling really off and he was hoping to find the time to go make some adjustments and he wasn't able to find that time so he's making a mid-round adjustment here elias that tells a lot about the confidence of a player being able to change their form even during the round and still playing on a high level that's very impressive stuff from Paul. As we saw a couple of errand drives from both Silver and Gustav. From here it's really just a pitch up to the corner. Try to play where you were originally trying to play with your drive. Gustav might actually try to get around the corner even. Looks like he is. Gets a huge skip with the forehand. That was a great shot. I believe he's almost within jump putt range especially with his putting distance. Paul here needs perfect touch to land this disc flat. Hits one of the late branches and gonna have a scary, very scary circles edge pot with nothing but danger behind the baskets. Prime position here. Oh, and that's trailing off early. Mm, tough spot to putt from right there. That'll be a death putt. Yeah, I would be surprised even in this situation if Lauri would run that putt. Gustav there putting it under the basket. Let's see if Lauri actually does run it. Very scary putt. But he's been putting good. And that's an incredible run. Confident. Hits the band. And most importantly. Stays right there. But that's not enough. To not lose a stroke to Paul. As he makes a great putt from 11 meters there. You can see even being a little bit excited about that one. He knows what that means. Extending that lead to 3 strokes. With only... Seven holes to go after this. Yeah, he definitely got excited about that putt. Just to step outside the circle and... You're right, he knows that three strokes is pretty comfortable. Just one birdie here on the 11th. All 12's pretty sweet visual here. You've got a nice gallery sitting up on the road behind this basket. There's two pretty wide fairways to choose from. A lot of players are playing up the right side here. The flat backhand shot. And you can opt to lay this one short of that OB pawn that you see in front of the basket. Most players are actually just 
Giving this one a little ace run, trying to land on the hill just past the basket and putt back down at it. Yep. Really important to either commit to the going over the water or leaving it short. Paul, judging by the power, looked like he was trying to go over but just completely misses the first gap. So opportunity for Lauri to possibly get a stroke, but this is low though. This needs to stay up in the air and he just barely makes it over the water. Laser beam. It's a fast shot. Oh, Silver going forehand. Left gap. Just fires it from the hip. Don't really know anybody else that throws it like him. And look, that just sticks. These clovers, they just grab. There's just not a lot of skips out here, are there? Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I feel this course is extremely fair. You're not going to get a lot of random ground play. Very consistent small skips here as Gustav is giving it the good ace run going over the basket. Giving some entertainment to the crowd. Gonna be a scary putt from there though. Looking straight directly at the water. Paul has to make sure to be long enough here. You don't want to leave this short at all. And he actually runs it for the birdie still. Great run, sells right there for the par. Let's see if Gustav is able to make this, and he does. It's a great, great place to make a big putt as all of the gallery is watching. Really great feeling. Sinking a good one there. Silver. Trying to do the same. Three birdies in a par. Laurie getting one back there. Headed across the road here to the easiest hole on the course. Hole 13, just 104 meters. OB on the left side of that fairway. There's one bushy tree in the middle that kind of forces players to throw a little flex line at this pin. What do you think, Ellie? Is most players throwing mid-range here? Yep, either mid-range. Some players even going with an overstable putter here. Or if you want to be really touch, you can throw that very soft fairway really a dealer's choice wouldn't be surprised to see silver actually going with that forehand route that we have seen a couple of times throughout the tournaments but Lauri obviously going with the backhand mid-range i believe throwing a trust here that's a little bit left that's not going to be in the circle and not even close Big forehand here, up, uh, kind of out over the OB. Oh, and Silver knows he misfired that. Oh, and actually not terrible. Just a couple paces outside the circle. Over 40% of the field getting the birdie on this simple par three. So everybody on this lead card. He's definitely trying to do the same as Gustav is throwing the perfect looking shot, almost acing the basket. Just comes up low. 
That was the perfect shot on this hole. And we'll see if Paul is actually going with that zone again. He has gone with the zone in the previous rounds. Throwing it very fast, very hard. Oh, and that's just complete misfire. Meant to hit it on Annie, just threw it kind of baby hyzer even. You can see Gustav's twin brother, Philip, there. Many people having trouble distinguishing them from each other. For good reason. Both very solid young players from Sweden. As Paul is forced to just lay it up, Laurie, I believe, has a run at the basket. But far ways out, 25 meters here. This would be huge if he can sink this. Oh, nearly dunks that one. Couldn't tell if it went just behind it. Man, the door is just... It's still open here, you know? The play hasn't been stellar from either of our leaders coming into the round. Yeah, both of them slowing down from the pace that they had in the previous rounds. Pretty surprising as Silver airballs twice in a row and he's gonna have a long putt left. This is an important putt, not only for the score of this hole, but also for the confidence of the rest of the round. And he makes it. Strong mental there. He's had a tough round. Still needs to keep going. Important positions to positions to take on this tournament. It's one of the one of the bigger tournaments held in Sweden. And just as important as all the other Euro Tour events. So Gustav's twin brother is also playing in the event? Yes, I believe. Philip, Gustav's brother, was not positioned nearly as well as Gustav. I believe they're relatively close as far as level of play. Gustav is consistently just a little bit better. I believe only, a, only about 20 points in rating. So both of them very promising. As we see... Lead card finishing this, this hole at even par. That's surprising. That is very surprising. And man, I just wonder what that feels like for your twin brother to just be better than you at anything, really. It's got to be weird. Here we are. Very attackable par four. You just need to shape something through this gap. Most players are really hammering on a driver with a little bit of turn that just drifts just in front of these trees right here and gets stability late in the flight and yeah this fairway opens up quite a bit obviously the further you throw off the tee the easier this approach becomes because there is an ob pond just in front of the pin you have to decide if you're going to lay up short of it or try and pin this one Important decision to be made, even off the tee, whether you want to go for more of a layup play or to go all out for the full distance here. Gustav throwing the forehand, which is the safer option. You can pretty consistently get to the fairway, get good distance and be on the right side, which opens up that angle to approach. But looks like Laura is going with the driver, probably going full smash here, trying to get far down there. That's rolling to the OB. Stops just safe. What did it hit? I don't know, but that's one of the luckier breaks you're gonna see on this hole. That was going directly towards OB. I believe hit like a stump or a tree. 
or something like that. Still a chance for Paul to possibly get a stroke with that birdie, because Laura is not in a good position. But Paul has not turned this over. He's also on the left side. Not a good position there. I would almost call that a very difficult birdie. He definitely cannot park it from there. Possibly a chance to lay up right side of that pond for that long look. Man, and just a couple of misfire fires here from Lowry and Paul. And Silver just making it past the group of trees. He should be able to see the pin, maybe even throw a forehand at it. And Lowry's going to have to make a tough decision here. Does he try to go for this with some crazy hyzer over the top? Looks like he is looking high. Yep. Can't really tell from this angle if it's crazy or not so crazy. Looks very crazy if he's going over all of those trees. Important to get over first and only thing, then think about the basket. Looks like he has thrown it very well. He's, I believe, in far circle two there. Gonna be a pretty simple par. Or even a run at the basket if he wants it. Okay, position here for Gustav. Oh, and a little too conservative there. He's outside circle two. Paul also has to make a decision here. He seems pretty Pinched forehand turnover. Luckily for him, there is no OB on the right side, so the risk of fading out is that's not really a problem here. Looks like he's only playing to the open field there, not really going for the basket at all. But from there, it's gonna be a nervy approach. He can't leave it short because he's gonna be in the water, but if he goes at all long, the disc is quite quickly gonna slide down to the edge of the circle. Hold on now. Oh, and it does! <laughs> Bounces off the turf. Catches some thick grass, stays safe. Important approach from Paul here. Needs to get this close. Ideally on the far side of the basket to be safe. That's just a perfect touch there. What do you think, Nate? Is this whole eagle bull with a huge drive? Oh, it certainly is. I think, you know, there's probably 25% of this field that can throw it, you know, up to 160 meters on this flex line. Um, I, I would say it's eagleable. Honestly, I'm surprised that there hasn't been one yet. Well, I got a treat for you, my guy, since there was actually two eagles during this round. Shout out to Simon Coupling and Lauri Hammerlining getting that two on this hole. Lauri's turn now. Does he get the birdie? And a stroke on Paul Macbeth. And it stays. Good little bounce back birdie for Silver after that three putt. So not a lot of action here as far as the lead on the whole 14. Silver getting that lone birdie, everybody else walking away with that par. Yeah, and at this point in the round, James Proctor is nearly done with his round. And he is actually gonna finish at 14 under par 
for the event. So he's now tied with Lowry and just two back of Paul. So Paul might be thinking he's just battling with Lowry and could potentially, you know, has a few strokes to play with. But James is in the clubhouse. So Paul needs to play pretty clean on these last four, which can be difficult. Starting with this 150 meter par 3 here. Very demanding. There's a bushy tree in the middle of the fairway that you get to shape around. And then there's OB on the right and left of this fairway. Yeah, it's just a really long demanding shot. You need that perfect angle control here. Many people hitting that bushy tree that you mentioned. As well as silver. It's a pretty good obstacle because every time somebody hits it, I feel like they just drop straight down. There's really no funny business when you hit that tree. Let's see if Gustav can get this drive to the green. Perfect angle, just a little bit low there. I wish he was a little bit higher. Could have possibly seen him land in circle two or even close to circle one. Lauri had great success on this hole in the previous round, making it look pretty easy even with the 150 meter distance. This needs to stay right. Might be challenging that left side OB. <sighs> Did that just bounce off the stake? I think that might have. Wow, that just another one of those magical breaks. He's got a couple of those so far. Yeah, that's going to be back-to-back -back holes. He just cut rolled it OB on the last one and it stayed safe. And Paul's been overturning this one out of bounds. And he's made the correction here. He's just 11 meters out for a birdie. Yeah, Lauri is going to have difficult footing from the creek. So advantage Paul here on this hole. Silver with a decent forehand approach there. Just outside the bullseye. And maybe Gustav with his range of putts might actually be giving this a run. got quite the range on that spin putt all right Lowry from a knee to not lose a stroke potentially with Paul being closer that's a big miss potentially a huge miss potentially a costing miss let's see if Paul can get this huge moment and he goes through the left side chains. That was by no means dead center, but through the chains. That was uh, really a 50-50 whether he had, it would have stuck or not. Yeah, those have been sticking on that left side for sure. These will bounce back out at you on the pole, but they do tend to catch. And Paul's just going to have two... Strokes with three holes to play. Some super demanding holes at that.
All right, the 16th is just such a beautiful par five. Meandering green grass through the forest. This first shot is asking the player to throw a driver that's turning almost the whole way. Maybe some late stability in the flight if you really crunch on the disc and get around that first corner. Second shot is also very demanding. You have to throw through this little tunnel and set yourself up for this third that finishes pretty sharply from left to right. And you can see just that dense birch forest. It's just, the, it's one of the best natural hazards in the game because it, it limits the throw because of the small gaps, but you can also get very creative out of it. Yeah, for sure. And making this great hole even better with that just beautiful terrain. Surprising here, Silver going with the backhand and Gustav going forehand. Would have expected it to go the other way around, honestly. But Gustav in very good position with the forehand. Silver, decent position, kind of quite a lot shorter than he would have liked and I'm sure Laura is really trying to fix the error that Silver did with his throw leaving it low you need to get this up in the air a good bit to move right and get that distance at the same time beautiful shape is it turning enough it is not but it punches out it's a big moment right there. From there, Lauri might need to go to the forehand just to avoid the spruce, spruce branches. So Paul, if Paul can get the huge drive here, I believe he's going with that understable force. Trying to go big. Angle looks great. And he's flexing back past those two trees. That's a big drive, an imperfect position on the right side of the fairway, opening up that angle for the second shot. Yeah, I would say pretty much perfection from Paul right there. On the second shot, it is important to push far forward, but also push left. Many players end up too far right on this shot, as Gustav does as well. It's really too easy to push it too far forward. Hit those right side trees, and from there you don't have a look at the birdie. This is another very rarely birdied hole. Only 6% of the field getting a birdie on this hole. It's time for Lowry to do something special here with Paul in such a good position. Has to go with kind of an inside out hyzer. Stand still. Looks to be pretty good, although it is shorter than he would like. But he's gonna have a selection of gaps to go to the basket from there. Paul from the perfect position. This looks too straight though, he needs to get left in a hurry. And gets a great kick back to the fairway. Without the kick I believe his birdie chance would have been gone, but with that kick he still has a pretty reasonable shot to the basket from there. Gustav not quite connecting with that left gap right there. Kicks down into the fairway. You can see the similarity between the twins there. Silver here, trying to go with a powerful flex forehand. Needs to fade back quickly. 
what an angle on that shot. That thing just smoking out of Silver's hand. Always so fun to watch the way that he delivers the forehand. For sure one of the more powerful forehand throwers in Europe. And Lauri here has to go for this left, left side gap. That was a good looking forward, but also pushes a little bit too straight. Not really a birdie chance from there, he's about 40 meters away. Yeah, that was a pretty high level shot to attempt, and he nearly executed. Buzz SS for Paul, and this is too inside. Whoa. I don't know if that's Jail over there, if he's got a routine up and down. Yeah, hard to tell. Really depends on the kick. I believe we just couldn't quite see where that disc ended up. But surprising that Paul missed the shot with that disc. He has been throwing that pink buzz as, as super well throughout the whole tournament. Gustav there, solid approach. Looks like Paul has some trouble here. Going zone here and navigates himself through the gap. So Larry is going to have a chance to pick one back from, I believe, a pace outside circle two. Silver's up first. Trying to toss this one in. Deep in circle two here. Big moment, big chance to get that stroke back. It is sailing wide, unfortunately. Not quite for Lauri. He knows that was an important stroke. The upcoming two holes are definitely chances for stroke swings, but you don't want to be two strokes back going into 17, that is for sure. Another just confidence stroke from Gustav. Not really shining as far as driving this round, but his putting is even better. And Gustav is actually tied with four other competitors right now for just one of two USDGC spots that they're giving away. So if he makes this island cards a birdie then pars the 18th he actually gets that spot outright so very important couple of holes coming up for the swede yep and you know that he knows that as well you know he's got his brother brother as a caddy i'm sure they know the scores and know the situation it's a huge opportunity for such a young player to get that USDG spot so early on in their career. Here we go, sweet island hole in the woods, 69 meters. A little bit of headwind left to right here on Sunday. So many different ways to play this. It's really all about the practice you get out here. Some. Some players like straight putter, some players like they use the stability to control the distance. I know Paul's been going zone here on the backhand flex. A lot of players throwing forehand here. We saw Lowry with that yesterday. And I believe Lowry is gonna have the box before Paul does. He'll be able to maybe put some pressure on. Here's Silver first. Going with a harp forehand I believe one of his signature shots that is a little bit low and unable to make the island he knew it out of his hand not gonna skip over the edge with that low speed disc important shot here for Gustav to give himself a chance for that USDCC spot No, and he pulls it, that's out of bounds. He needs to hit that drop zone putt to stay in this US 
conversation. Okay, Lowry Lettinen. Two back of Paul. If he puts this on the island, there's no doubt Paul's got to feel some pressure to make it. Yep. Lowry also preferring the forehand here. He's kind of pulled it left, but it is stable. Perfect distance control there, knowing his disc. Able to utilize the whole width of the fairway. Okay, so Paul's sticking with the zone here. He sees Lowry inside the bullseye. He just plays this little baby flex. I think he's going with his disc to control speed. And it's perfect. That doesn't completely seal it, but it's close. He's going to have two strokes with just one hole to play. Big moment there, and he seemed pretty relaxed on that throw. Yep, very routine-looking shot from both Paul and Lauri. Silver unable to make that drop zone putt. Gustav, lot on the line for this putt. Luckily, he's got a strong circle two, even circle three putt. This putt is about 19 meters from the basket. Not quite. He will have to birdie hole 18 if he wants to be a part of that sudden death for the USDJC spot. That's a tall order ahead of him. Would have been much easier to make the island. <laughs> That's pretty unfortunate. He's been showcasing his skills here. Both Paul and Lauri getting the birdie as expected on this hole. All going down to the final hole. And it wouldn't be a surprise to see a two stroke swing one way or another on this difficult hole 18. No question. This is a really tough final hole. It's just 210 meters, but there's such a low ceiling. The grass is so thick, you're not getting any skips. There's OB all along the left side of that fairway out in that field. And there's really three series of gaps the whole way down. Most players are throwing the right hand backhand through the right alleyway and hoping to get somewhere back up in the middle. Maybe 110, 120 meters down the fairway. Some players are opting to go out left with a little forehand. Lauri needs to be far down the fairway here and in the middle. That's pretty much his only chance here. Going for that right side gap. He hits the gap clean, but the disc is turning over. That's not a good position to be on the right side. Yet the right side does open up a little bit for the forehand, depending on where the disc ended up. Couldn't quite see it. He might even have a forehand look to the basket from there. Tip. Big drive here. And that looks super clean. Gets a little curl. He's in the fairway. And Lowry would have to make some magic happen to put any kind of pressure on Paul at this point. Yeah, that does take Paul a step closer to become, becoming the champion here. Silver just absolutely ripping a forehand on this final hole. Unfortunately, too high there. He's going to have a long ways to go to the green. You can see just how much this tournament means to Lauri. One of the m fiercest competitors you're ever going to find in the sport of disc golf.
Gustav also kind of flirting with that right side gallery. Possibly has a pretty similar angle as Lauri. Gonna have to likely play a forehand or just lay up back and there. As Silver is going very quickly to the next shot. Good looking forehand here. Foreha forehand, excuse me. <laughs> That's massive right there. What? And there's our guy, Elias Lukanen, signing some autographs. Nice appearance, man. And this is, this is it right here. He's got to come up with some magic. Make Paul earn it on the final hole. That has come up short. It is nowhere near birdie range. Still 40 meters to go and a low ceiling to that elevated basket. You can see Paul is just grabbing that zone and just pitching it up the fairway. He knows he only needs to take a par or even a bogey here might do the job. Gustav still very much in play for that USDGC spot as we see Paul with just the perfect approach sealing the deal with that crowd loves it he probably loves it Lauri probably doesn't love it let's see if he tries to make some fireworks for the gallery not interested in that just pitches it under the baskets I think Lowry's gonna have that to for the par to potentially card solo second ahead of James, who is at 14. Yep, James Proctor with a great record breaking 11 under round. Gustav here for the USDGC sudden, sudden death playoff. It was a great run, just barely misses it. That's heartbreaking finish for him to go bogey par the final two holes. Yeah, it's pretty sad. I don't know how many opportunities Gustav is gonna get at that bid. Oh no. Yeah, what an unfortunate way for him to end his tournament. Gonna go bogey bogey. He's up and in. That's going to be good for solo second. No, it's not what he's looking for, but another really solid performance. And he's he's still fresh off the military, man. You guys, you Finns have it a little different, huh? Yep, mandatory mil military service in Lowry doesn't seem to be affected by it at all. Paul Macbeth is the shell of the Open champion 2023. Another victory for him on the Euro Tour.
All right, we're here now with Sleftia Open champion Paul Macbeth. Paul, let's start with that little party that just went down right there. How cool was that? And happy oh, birthday, man. Thank you. That was amazing. That's the most people I've ever had sing happy birthday to me at once. So I'm not really a party person. So uh, yeah. Hannah kept asking me what I'm going to do tonight. And I'm like, pack up, get ready to leave for the next one tomorrow. So <laughs> I've got something for you, Paul. Eight years ago, this weekend, you played disc golf here at this course on your birthday and you went on to win the major. I don't know if a lot of people know that. When you showed up to the course, do those memories come flooding back to you at all that you that you won a major here? So yeah, that was I mean that was 2015, so that was a pretty good year, pretty solid. Uh, that was the year I won all five majors that year. So um, I didn't know if I'd ever play here again, to be honest. And uh, to come here, the memories did flood back as I was driving through the town, driving up to the course, seeing some of these holes. There's been some changes, but uh, still has that same feel. Uh, so it was uh, really exciting to be here and. Um, I didn't play like I did back then, but uh, I'm still able to squeak this one out. So yesterday, after the round, you told us that you were going to go work on your timing a little bit. Did you get a chance to go do that? Did you do it in the evening, or did you do it this morning? I didn't get a chance. After dinner and all that stuff, it was like 11 o'clock, which out here you can come out and play. You can come out and play, actually, any hour of the day. But uh, didn't get the opportunity, but showed up a little bit early to work on work on the the drive and um, as you can tell I kind of switched my run up and routine halfway through the round because it just wasn't timed up well and it wasn't clicking so kind of went back to just pulling that left arm off the disc and just only worrying about the front arm and uh, I feel like it kind of helped um, as soon as I switched but I just never got into that full rhythm mm -hmm. especially like the par five like I was looking at a fairly easy bird and just couldn't get it up couldn't get up and down to really uh, Myself some mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you looked at me and you said bogey free, but five under. The door seemed to be wide open today, but Laurie just didn't want to walk through it. Can you can you talk about his game and, and, and the battle that, that just didn't ever come to a head? Yeah, yesterday uh, he shredded the front the front half, you know, the first seven or so. Today he was over par through that stretch, so that's kind of how this course can be. And um, I, I only had five birdies on the day. And I didn't have many to start, so it's not like I was gaining a bunch of ground on him. Um, he was kind of just giving me the strokes early, so he kind of had himself in a hole. And uh, I wanted to really try to run away with it. I was giving myself opportunities, but I just couldn't get close enough. And uh, he was he was coming back, but he just couldn't, uh, like you said, he couldn't take it over and, and, and really get close enough to put a lot of pressure on me. You know, I had two with four to play. And, once I threw the drive on, on 15, I kind of knew uh, 16, 17, 18 are kind of my holes. Mm -hmm. So you didn't feel any pressure. You had two going into 17. He tees before you, puts it underneath the basket. If you miss that island, it's a tie ball game potentially. Were you yeah. feeling any pressure there? Not really because I was throwing a zone there. Uh, that hole's actually tricky. If, if you don't get to practice it, you think, oh, straight putter, real easy. But it's like a wind tunnel. You got the big open field behind you. You got a 18th fairway and then the like, kind of farm area on the left. So there's a lot of sneaky wind going through there. So I just know I take my straighter zone and just um, give it a little Anheuser and it'll get on that island nearly every time. So uh, I wasn't too worried. And it's a fairly big island with wood chips, so you don't really get many skips. So as soon as I let it go, I feel like you're know, sticking. You're in the circle when you're on that island. So uh, it felt pretty automatic for this today. Yep. So three events now on the Euro Tour. Would you say that this tour has been a success thus far? Oh man, I, in the terms of wins, yes, and that stuff. But as far as where I want to be with my game, I still got some work to do. Uh, we got the big one coming up next week and then the major um, in two weeks from now. So I still got things to work on, which to be honest, I'm happy about or else I would just kind of ride this and coast it to the next one. Cool. Well, thank you for the interview, Paul. Congrats on taking down another Euro Tour event and happy 33rd birthday, man. Thank you. Wow. One of the more wholesome and at the same time kind of absurd moments to happen on the disc golf course.
hundreds of people singing happy birthday to Paul Macbeth as he's the champion and the birthday king. Laura Lehtinen second, James Proctor third with that incredible round. Mira Ryhänen and Scott Stokely rounding out the top five and shout out to Pekka Hyvönen shooting a great final round and actually getting that final USDGC spot after a three-hole playoff. Pretty epic stuff and you know it was actually eight years ago this weekend Elias that Paul Macbeth won a major here in Sheleftia. Uh, same weekend as his birthday, so pretty special thing he has going on up here in the north of Sweden. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to MDG Media. Elias and myself will see you next week in Norway. Love you guys.